So um, just to let you know, today's event is being recorded. So if you feel uh, uncomfortable about that, please remember to keep your um, screen, uh, uh, your video off and your um, yourself muted while the event is going on. Um, so uh, I think that we'll just jump in in a couple of minutes. We seem to have more and more people joining us. So maybe I will give them a few more minutes, but I'll tell you a little bit about how this project started. Basically, um, around uh, two years ago, the raffles oh, event. The raffles oh, sorry. I'm just going to ask, okay. I'm just going to keep muting people as you come into the room, um, uh, unless you're a volunteer. If you have any questions uh, or if you have um, any uh uh, any comments that you want to make, please feel free to use the chat um, uh, function to ask questions or to, um, uh, you know, bring up any points. Um, so um, I'm going to get started on the storytelling in a minute. So basically, this project started um, around uh, two years ago, and we had our launch at the first Festival of Biodiversity in Singapore. And it was a collaboration between Jengadal Institute and the Raffles Banded Langer um, Working Project, um, uh, Working Group. So uh, if someone just... Okay, so if you have any kids with you today, what I would recommend is that for the final part of the activity session, normally what we do is that we tell a few different stories and then at the end, we take you through uh, your kids through a few slides that help them come up with their own wildlife story where they can, you know, uh, uh, kind of come up with a, a, a story about a wildlife creature who's in trouble and then uh, problem solve a way for them to get out of that trouble or something that they themselves can do to help wildlife or to help the environment to make sure that um, animals are safe and healthy and protected. So. Um, I think that now that we have a pretty large number of people in the room, I'm just going to start up the program. So the first story that we'll be telling you today um, is written by a group of students at um, uh, Raffles Institute in the biodiversity program. So um, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen with you and we will have fun. And again, if anybody has any questions, we have a lot of volunteers. Sid is here, Selena is here, Shinwei is here, Dominic is here, and they're all in the chat. So if anybody has any questions, um, you can ask them. So I think I'm going to actually really quickly what I'll do is that I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce each of them and ask them to say a quick hello to you. So I'm going to start with Selena and I'm going to put Selena's camera on if I can do that. <laughs> Selena, do you want to put your camera on for a minute? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, everyone. I'm Selena, and I'm very proud to be part of this um, this project. This is my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can't hear you, Cora. <laughs> Thanks. That's why we need lots of volunteers. Um, so we're going to hear from Selena a little bit later about beach cleanups and some other things that kids and grown-ups can do for the environment. But I'm going to um, turn off the camera now and turn it over to Sid. Um, okay. Uh, Sid, where are you? I'm going to ask you to unmute and pop in to say a quick hello. Hello. Hi. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening to some of you guys there. I'm Sid. Uh, I'm one of the volunteers at, uh, with, with Cora and the rest of the crowd uh, on the storytelling side of Jane Goodall Institute here in Singapore. Uh, and it's been a great journey so far. We've got some really exciting things planned for you coming up. This is the, uh, the first one of our events that we're doing with all of you, and I hope you really enjoy it. Uh, and can't wait to see you on many, many more of them. So see you soon. Thanks, Sid. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to turn off your camera just for now, and then I'm gonna introduce um, Dominic. Uh, Dominic, I hope your camera is working. I'm not sure, we can try. Uh, you wanna say a quick hello to everyone? Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Dominic. I've been volunteering for the uh, storytelling program for I think more than a year I'm kidding. for two years yeah yeah for two years <laughs> yeah so uh, it's 
Uh, it's really fun uh, besides uh, sharing uh, stories of uh, different wildlife in Singapore, including the Raffles banded langur, um, hermit crabs, and many other, a whole host of uh, interesting characters uh, which you will get to hear from, uh, learn from, you know, learn all the in their interesting characteristics and behaviors. Uh, besides all of that, uh, you will also get to interact with um, the many uh, interesting and uh, many interesting and very knowledgeable members of the Jane Goodall Institute. So uh, we're really looking forward to hear from uh, both uh, kids and adults during this session. And uh, also looking forward to uh, work with you during the uh, interactive sessions where we get to uh, solve some problems uh, for wildlife in Singapore and possibly around the world. Thanks, Dominic. All right, I'm going to ask you to turn off your camera. And I'm going to try soon. We had some trouble before with with your camera, but let's see if, it, if it's working a little bit better now. Um, and so you can at least say hello to everybody. Um, okay, for people who are coming in, just so that you know, I'm just gonna keep people's cameras and mics off so that uh, we don't have too much of that echo effect that happens on Zoom sometimes. All right, so uh, Sinway, do you wanna say a quick hello to everybody? Oh, I think we're still having some connection problems, but at least um, Shinwei managed to, oh, let's try it. I, I just heard a little sound, you wanna say hello? <laughs> All right. I think it's, it's getting a bit echoey, so I'm just gonna um, play the video that you made for us later. All right, so uh, you can ask Shinwei and any of the other volunteers uh -huh. Questions in, in, the... in Singway, I want to now. You can try National Way, see if it works. I'm just going to turn off your camera and then we'll get started on the program, okay? All right, so um, without further ado, I think we'll just jump right into some of the storytelling. So um, let's see, uh, I would recommend that all of you here, I'm gonna share my screen so you know what to do for the purposes of this, because we've prepared it so that you have a, um, so that you have a, uh, do, 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 why is this happening now? Hmm. Um, Basically what I'm gonna recommend is that you go up to view in the corner, you see there's a little button that says view and you turn on speaker view so that the person who you see is the person who is um, speaking. I don't know why it's showing uh, somebody in the audience as a speaker. So maybe we'll go back to gallery view for a second. Um, I may need to uh, adjust this, but anyway, so I'm gonna start sharing the slides and uh, we'll start uh, telling some of the stories in a minute. So the first story that we are going to tell is um, a story about a Raffles banded Langer who is a uh, little baby. And basically he is in the midst of learning how to jump on his own um, because it's very important for raffles banded langers to learn how to jump by themselves because actually unlike other primates like macaques which many of you may have seen all around singapore many many times um, raffles banded langers live way high up in the trees and they almost never come to the ground so some of the problems that they face that are difficult are um, deforestation so for example when we lose a lot of trees or the trees are too far apart from each other it's very difficult for them to swing from one branch to the other and they may fall to the ground and get hurt so that's why it's so important for this baby to learn how to jump by himself because he's getting bigger. He's getting too big for his mommy to carry him around. So he's gonna have to learn how to jump from tree to tree. Then we're also gonna tell you a story about a crab, a shell and a little help, which is a story about a, um, uh, doo -doo -doo, excuse me, which is a story about a uh, little hermit crab who gets involved in a beach cleanup to help all of his friends who uh, are on the beach. Um, uh, if, if anyone entering the room can please remember to just mute yourselves as you come in, that would be really, really helpful. 
um, because that way we'll avoid that echo effect that happens sometimes in, uh, in Zoom. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep reminding people to do that occasionally, sorry about that. So basically now um, I'm going, and then we'll have a story read by Dr. Jane Goodall that's a biographical story written about her by a really wonderful cartoonist. Um, and I'm gonna tell you another little story that isn't on the list uh, if we have enough time, which is a really lovely story actually originally written for adults by Leo Tolstoy, but that's been adapted into a tale for children um, about uh, animals. And it's very, very sweet. Um, so hopefully we'll have time for that one. And then finally, um, we will be encouraging you to help your kids find, if you have paper, if you have you know, uh, colored pencils or markers, they can, uh, we'll lead them through a little workshop where they get to write their own story. And then they can send it into us if they like. And we actually have um, the option to feature it on our uh, website if you'd like us to, or um, for some of the stories, um, if we are really, really amazed by them, which I'm sure we will because we always are, we're, we're planning to send uh, the participants and the writers a little um, uh, uh, <laughs> a little memento, which is a beautiful letter written by Jane Goodall and an illustration of her sitting up in a tree, which I'll show you guys later. But let's focus now on the um, on the story. So, um, without further ado, I will move on to telling you the story of Poe the critically endangered baby Raffles banded Langer, which was written by a group of students from Raffles Ecological Literacy Program. So it's really, I say for, for kids from three to 10, but anyone can enjoy this story. Um, so this is the story, this is the cover of the book, and I'm going to play a short video now very quickly um, where Sid is going to be uh, telling us a little bit more about um, Jane Goodall and some of his time in Gombe and a little bit more about uh, the program. So let me just open that up for you. Um, all right. Hello, kids. Whoops, one second. So here we go. Hello, kids. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. My name is Safari Sid, and I'm talking to you today from the Jane Goodall Institute right here in Singapore. We can't wait to tell you all about some of our wonderful primates that you can see out here, and to tell you a lovely story about a young Raffles band of Langer who learned to jump from tree to tree. But first, I want to quickly tell you about our founder, Dr. Jane Goodall. Did you know she was the first person in the whole wide world to teach us humans that animals, and particularly primates, should be classified as intelligent life, just like you and me? Over 60 years ago, she went all the way from England to the eastern part of Africa, to a country called Tanzania. After hours and hours on a big, big plane, and then on a boat, and then walking through the thick, thick jungles, she made a camp in a small forest called Gombe Stream National Park. She was only 20 years young at the time. She spent many long years watching, listening, and learning all about the chimpanzees that live there. How they walk, how they talk, and did you know she can even say a few things just like them? It's called a pant hoot, and she sounds just like a chimpanzee when she does it. She learned how they live in their families just like us and how they even use tools like knives and forks and chopsticks to eat with. And now she travels the whole wide world telling us all about them and teaching us how they're our brothers and sisters and we need to look after them. 60 years later, I went there myself to see her lovely little camp where it all started. We took a big, big plane, then we took a teeny tiny boat and on the shores of Lake Tanganyika, we arrived at the camp, but no one was there to be seen. So we walked and walked and hiked and hiked up and down the mountains until we saw some of these little guys. And it was wonderful seeing them in their families and in their home. I hope that one day you will go there too. But until then, don't forget, there is so, so much to see wherever you are in the world. You just need to step outside and see what there is to see. All right, so 
without further ado, please let me present the story of Poe the Baby Raffles Banded Langer. Thank you so much for that, Sid. That was really great. So today we're going to start with telling you the story written by students at Raffles Institute's Biodiversity Program. So we're very, very excited to share the story with you because it's the first one that we ever shared at the Festival of Biodiversity. And we've now been performing it regularly in live performances at the National Library for around a year and a half or so. And um, we hope, you know, when Circuit Breaker is over that we can start doing that again in person. Um, and until then, um, for now, we've uh, developed this digital program. So um, if any of you have questions that come up during the performance, like I said, please drop it into the chat group. And please remember to keep yourself muted and keep your camera off while the storytelling is going on. Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome. Um, all right, here we go. So let me introduce the characters. First, we have Poe, the hero of our story. Oops. <laughs> First, we have Poe, the hero of our story, who's a baby Raffles banded langer that needs to learn how to jump all on his own with help from his friends. Please uh, remember to keep yourself muted if you're in the audience. Otherwise, we'll all <laughs> be talking over each other. Uh, thank you so much. Um, all right. so. Poe, the hero of our story, is this little baby Raffles banded langer who needs to learn how to jump on his own with a little help from his friends. Mama is Poe's mother who's teaching him how to jump. And brother is Poe's older sibling who wants to play in the trees with him. Until now, Poe has always hung onto mommy's chest while she jumped, but now it's getting too big for her to carry. So let's find out what happens when his friends decide to try to help him. Sorry, the sound is gone. Can you hear me? Can you hear now? Yes, now yes, but we missed the whole first part. Oh dear. Okay, thank you. Sorry about the sound cutting out there. I was just introducing the characters. Poe, who's the hero of our story. Baby Raffles Banded Langer, who has to learn to jump on his own with help from his friends. Um, and uh, this is Mama, who's Poe's mother, who's teaching him how to jump. And brother is Poe's older sibling who wants to play in the trees with him. And so now I'm gonna show you some images and some videos of Raffles banded langers. And you know, Singapore is the only place in the world where you find them and they're endangered here. There's only around 60 or 65 left in all of Singapore. So that's why it's so important to protect them and their environment. As you can see, they like to jump around in the trees. They live very, very high up. They're very shy and cautious. They're not like macaques. They're very rarely would approach a human. They like to eat green leaves and shoots and things that they find um, up in the trees to eat. They live in troops where they have um, a very close family. They like to play with each other a lot like people do. And they also take care of each other. They do something called grooming where they clean each other from little bugs and different things that might be stuck in their fur. And in some ways they're like us, they sneeze, they yawn. Sometimes if you look at these monkeys, you can see some people that you might know for some of the same behaviors that they have. And it's very special to be able to have these monkeys. Here you see them jumping around 
because it's the only place in the world that you find Raffles banded langurs. So because it's so important for Poe to learn how to jump, his friends in the forest are going to help him learn how to jump, but they all have their own different ways of doing it. So I'm going to show you a couple of, of very quick videos to teach you a little bit about his different friends. So this is Draco, the common gliding lizard, and he's Poe's friend who's going to help him. He has big skin flaps under his arms that help him jump and soar through the air. So another friend that we'll be meeting in Poe's story is Kaluga, who is another Singapore forest mammal with big flaps under his arms, who also leaps from tree to tree. He's another good friend who wants to help Poe. We've got another little video to show you about Kaluga. So as you see, they have those big flaps under their arms and they might hang from a tree. soar through the air. So finally, we come across Snow, the paradise tree snake, who's also a good friend, and he's helping Poe learn to climb. High in the tree. Um, oh dear, I don't know what happened to the Paradise Tree Snake video. Let me see if I can find it really, really quickly. Hmm. Um, so Paradise Tree Snakes are very, um, very interesting creatures, but I think I'm not able to find the video I wanted to show you about Paradise Tree Snakes, so I'll just have to tell you about them. So basically, a Paradise Tree Snake can flatten its body and soar and jump it looks almost like a ribbon flying through the air. So it jumps from tree to tree. So now you've been introduced to all of Poe's friends and seen some pictures of them. Let's get started on the story. High in the treetops of Lower Pierce Reservoir, Poe, a Raffles banded langer, enjoyed leaping from tree to tree, clinging tightly to his mother's chest and everywhere mother went, he went too. He loved it and he thought it would go on forever until one day mother said, Poe, you're getting bigger and heavier. It's time for you to climb trees on your own. Just then, Poe's brother came by. Hey, brother. Hey, Poe. Come with me and the other young monkeys and have some fun leaping from tree to tree. We're going to look for fruit and juicy leaves. Oh, yay! Whoa, Poe followed are. them, but after a while, he couldn't keep up. <sighs> Mommy, Mommy, I'm tired. Oh, why are they so fast? They're much older, that's why. One day you'll be fast too. <sighs> Just then, Poe's friend Draco, the common gliding lizard, glided by. Hey, Poe, how are you today? Well, I'd be happy if I were as fast as you, Draco. But, Poe, I've got skin flaps that help me glide to, from tree to tree. Oh, well, I haven't got any skin flaps. How will I ever learn to jump? Kalugo, their friend, heard them as he glided by. Yes, Poe. Like Draco, I have skin flaps too. Well, look, I don't have any skin flaps. That's why I can't glide like you guys. Swish. Their friend Snow, the paradise tree snake, flattened his lower body 
and jumped down from a high tree to join them. Hello, Spo. What a fine day to go tree climbing. Oh, hey, Snow. I was telling Draco and Kaluga that I would like to climb faster, but I haven't got any skin flaps and I can't flatten my body like you. But I can use my hands and legs to climb and my body to swing. If you can make my wish come true, how happy I would be. I'd like to leap from tree to tree. Please, will you help me? Yes. yes. Let's help Bo! And that's exactly what they did. Day after day, Poe climbed and climbed with his friends cheering him on. Let's all say it together. Sing along with me. Don't, Don't give, give up. Way to go. go. You can do it, Poe. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes po perfect. Don't give up. Way to go. You can do it, po. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes po. Week after week, Poe climbed faster and faster with his friends cheering him on. All together. Everybody at home, join in. Don't, Don't give up. Way, way to go. go. You, you can, can do it, Poe. Practice makes perfect. Practice, Practice makes perfect. Makes perfect. Practice makes Poe perfect. perfect. After much practice, Poe's wish came true. Thank you, friends. I can climb all by myself. You're great friends. Now I believe in me. And, and we, we believe, believe in you. you. Back home with his troop one day, Poe had an invitation from his sisters and brothers. Hey, Poe. Come with us and have some fun leaping from tree to tree. We're going to look for fruits and juicy leaves. <gasps> Let's go. Follow me. <whistles> Woohoo! They couldn't believe it. Poe kept up with them and sometimes he was even faster. How did you do it, Poe? I can't keep up. Well, I practiced. Well done, Poe. I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Mommy. Now I know. If I don't give up, I will succeed. Because... Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. perfect. Because everybody join in. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. All right. Well, that is the end of our first story um, about Poe, the Baby Raffles Banded Langer. And I just want to thank everyone for listening all the way through and paying such good attention. So thank you very much. So the next story that we are going to be sharing is about a beach cleanup here in Singapore at Changi Beach. And so I'm going to ask Selena to step in to talk to us a little bit about beach cleanups in a minute. But first I'm gonna share a video with you that uh, Shinwei recorded for us the other night. Now Shinwei is one of the most long-standing JGIS volunteers that we have on our team. He's been on other volunteer teams as well. So it's very nice that he joined us. So I'm just going to share that
that video with all of you and then we will get on to the story. Hello everyone, I am Xing Wei from JGIS. I am a volunteer at JGIS. What do I do at Jane Goodall Institute of Singapore? Well, I am a citizen scientist for a language service program. Yep, we do have leaf eating monkeys in Singapore too, called the Raffles Banded Langers. With just over 60 of them still around in Singapore, they need every help they can get. Previously, we thought that the Raffles Banded Langers was part of a species stretching from Northern Peninsula Malaysia to parts of Sumatra. But now, new research has shown that this species is restricted to Singapore, Johor, and Pahang. This makes conserving our langurs even more valuable, for our langurs are a significant part of the global population of Raffles banded langurs, and everyone can be a part of their conservation too. What we do as citizen scientists? Well, we collect data about langurs by observing them which might be helpful for researchers to know more about their biology and plan strategies for their conservation. Our data have certainly come in handy. For example, our observations on where they frequently cross the old Upper Thompson Road has been used in locating suitable sites for road bridges and to suggest other important patches of forests to protect. Besides helping in land conservation, I help in dealing with human market issues as a monkey guard and communication by developing content for our blog and newsletters. I also contribute to outreach in events like the Festival of Biodiversity. If you are watching this, there are many other ways you could contribute to conserving our environment and biodiversity. For example, you can participate in beach cleanups in various groups in Singapore. Besides keeping our beach clean, you prevent many marine animals from becoming affected by trash. Hopefully, you can contribute to conserve our environment together. There's definitely something for everyone. Join the club! Thanks so much, Shinwei. That was great. All right, so um, I'm going to turn it over to Selena now, who might have some other ideas about conservation for us and conservation projects that we can all do, and can also tell us a little bit more about beach cleanups. So Selena, if you can step in and tell us some of your thoughts. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so, you know, we all love to go to the beach and we all love hanging out at the beach with our families. We love to eat there. So what we also have to do is to try and see, you know, when you're at the beach to make sure that you clean up after yourselves so that, you know, you don't leave any trash behind. And if there's no trash, it means that the animals can come around, they can also eat and they can be safe as well. To help conserve the beaches, right, what we want to do is also to pick up after ourselves and also to make sure that, you know, we don't leave around any trash and we make sure that the animals are safe. So that's what I have to say <laughs> for beach cleanup. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Selena. So there's also other ways that you can take part in taking care of our beaches and our environment in Singapore. You can join up with beach cleanups that happen all the time. If you just look up upcoming beach cleanups in Singapore on Google or on Facebook, you'll find all sorts of opportunities to get involved and to help. You can clean up any place. You can clean up a park, you can clean up a beach, but we have the most pollution on beaches in Singapore because um, there's a lot of trash that is just dumped into the water all over the world and because water connects every country in the world the trash flows everywhere so there's actually so much plastic in the in the water now and different kinds of garbage that it's becoming a really really huge environmental problem and it really can hurt a lot of marine life and can even hurt us because we drink you know water and we um, sometimes eat food and eat fish that come from the water and they might have you know plastic that they've eaten in their bellies so there's all sorts of reasons for the whole ecosystem. That's the ecosystem is how we all work together and how animals are just as important to us. Um, 
uh, so uh, as we are within that ecosystem, because if they aren't well, and if they don't survive, then neither can we. So that's one way that you can help uh, take part in keeping our environment clean and keeping the water clean. You can also use reusable products. You can encourage your parents to use things that are reusable and to limit their use of plastic as much as possible. You can also encourage, you know, your parents and make choices yourself to, you know, buy products from companies that at least make an effort to keep up with environmental practices and to not pollute. You can start projects in your schools. You can join Jane Goodall Institute's Roots and Shoots, which is a club that connects kids all over the world, started by Jane Goodall herself. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But first, I'm going to turn over uh, to the story uh, about Hershey the Hermit Crab, um, which was written again by kids in the biodiversity program at Raffles Institute. And this video was made by N Parks for Biodiversity Week a few years ago. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to share the video with you now. All right, here we go. I didn't choose the one with subtitles. I need the one with subtitles. Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. It is a beautiful day at Changi Beach. Animals and people are out and about. Hershey the hermit crab lives here with Mama Crab. Mama, I can't fit my shell anymore. Hershey dear, you've outgrown your shell. You'll need to find a new one and it has to fit you just right. Hershey ponders over what Mama Crab has said. He decides to search the shores for the perfect shell. Stay safe. Okay. Oh no, I can't find any shells. Just when he thinks the search is hopeless, he stumbles upon an old can. This will have to do. Just a little shake and it will be up on my back. And so he heads back home. However, the more Hershey walks, the more tired he feels. The can does not fit. It's too large and heavy for me. I have to find another shell. So, he decides to go down into the ocean. Right before he enters the water, he meets Timmy the turtle. Hi Timmy, what are you doing? Oh, just having a lunch. You eat plastic bags for lunch? Oh, it's not the jellyfish? No Timmy, plastic bags are bad for your tummy. Don't eat any more even though they look yummy. Gee, thanks for your help. I will be more careful next time. No problem, Timmy. Say, do you have a shell to spare? Sorry, I don't. The only shell I have is stuck hard on my back. That's all right. I will keep searching. And so he goes on and meets Gogo the Gobi. Oh, Gogo, do you need help? Yes, please. I've been stuck in this net for hours now. Oh no, that's horrible. I will cut it with my crabby claws while you give it a wiggle. Gogo is free. Thank you, Hershey. No problem, Gogo. Say, do you have a shell to spare? Sorry, I don't. I'm protected by the seagrass around me. That's all right. I will keep searching. And so he goes on and meets Sally the snail. Hershey quickly approaches her. Sally, are you all right? I'm not feeling too well. It feels like there are chemicals in the water. Sure enough, Hershey feels it too. Hmm, what's causing this? There, Hershey hurriedly snatches up the battery. He runs onto the shore and throws it far away. Satisfied, he returns to the water. Thank you. Is there anything I can do to repay you? Well, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm looking for a perfect shell. Oh, I have one right here. This shell has been passed down for generations. 
My great-grandfather would have wanted this shell to belong to someone as kind as you. Why, thank you so much. This is exactly what I need. Glad I could help. I know it's difficult to find shells nowadays, as all these humans like to take them home. They even take crabs like you. Hershey sighs in agreement. Right at this moment, he suddenly feels himself being lifted out of the water. And then, he starts to slip out of the can. Help! He's falling and falling and... up by something. Relieved but scared, he gets back on his legs. Hershey looks up in the human's direction. Isn't that my can in the trash bag? His mind clicks. The human must be clearing trash. The human brings Hershey closer. Yet, he feels no threat and stares back at the curious human with wonder. After a few moments pass, he is put back down. Hershey, are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. The human was just trying to throw the can away. He wasn't trying to harm me. Maybe humans are not all that bad. Right, Hershey, now that you've got rid of your can, put on this shell. Delighted, Hershey tries it on. A perfect fit. At last, he can go home. Thank you, Sally. You're most welcome. Hershey bids farewell to Sally as he leaves. What an eventful day it has been. Hershey has found himself a new shell, made new friends, and learned something about humans. He cannot wait to get back to Mama Crab and tell her all about his adventure. Thank you all for sitting through that story as well. So now I'm going to be sharing a video of Jane Goodall reading her own biography, a story about herself as a little girl um, in which she talks to you about how she became a scientist. Um, and uh, I just wanna say that Jane Goodall was a huge influence on my life. When I was only 13 years old, I got to meet her, which was really, really exciting um, in Montreal where I was living back then. And I really became an environmentalist because of the things that she said at the talk that I went to. And then almost 30 years later, I got to meet her again here in Singapore last year, which was so exciting since I've been volunteering for Jane Goodall Institute and she comes here sometimes. So now I'm going to um, share this video of her telling her own story from her childhood. So let me just bring that up for you guys. Whoops. Um, give me two seconds. All right, here we go. All right, time to share the screen again. And this is Jane Goodall telling her own story, written by famous cartoonist Patrick McDonnell. Oh, here's Dr. Jane to read another book. And this is one of my favorites. It's called Me, Jane, and it's by a special friend of mine called Patrick McDonnell. He's the one who does the mutt strips. I bet some of you know the mutt strips. And it's actually a very special book because he dedicated it to me. So it's very precious. It's about me when I was a little girl, my dreams. Jane had a stuffed toy chimpanzee named Jubilee. And you know, I've still got Jubilee and I would show him to you, but he's in an exhibition in Washington DC put on by the National Geographic. And I think they're putting that uh, online so you'll actually be able to see Jubilee in that uh, Becoming Jane, it's called. She cherished Jubilee and took him everywhere she went. And Jane loved to be outside. She watched birds making their nests, 
spiders spinning their webs, and squirrels chasing one another up and down trees. Jay learned all that she could about the animals and plants she studied in her backyard and read about in books. I read a lot of books. There was no TV when I was growing up all those years ago. I formed a society with four of my friends. We called it the Alligator Society and it was pretty good fun. In the Alligator Club, we learned about animals. We read books about them. We answered questions. I wrote the questions. The others usually didn't bother to answer. We, we had special names for ourselves. I was Red Admiral, my sister was Trout, and the other two girls were Puffin and Ladybird. I still know them. One day, Curious Jane wondered where eggs came from. Have you ever wondered where the hole on the hen is, where the egg comes out? So she and Jubilee snuck into Grandma Nut's chicken coop. We were staying there for a holiday, my mother and I. She hid behind some straw, stayed very, very still, and observed the miracle. It was a magical world for Jane, full of joy and wonder. Jane felt very much a part of it. Jane often climbed into her favorite tree, which she named Beach. And Beach is still outside the window now. He's bigger now and older now, just like me. She would lay her cheek against its trunk and seem to feel the sap flowing beneath the bark. Have you ever tried to do that? It's the blood of the tree sucks up from the ground. Jane could feel her own heart beating, beating, beating. With the wind in her hair, she read and reread the books about Tarzan of the Apes, in which another girl, also named Jane, lived in the jungles of Africa. Jane dreamed of life in Africa too. A life living with and helping all animals. At night, Jane would tuck Jubilee into bed, say her prayers and fall asleep. To awake one day to her dream come true. Such a special picture. That's the dream come true. Me and Flo's son, Little Flint. So I hope you enjoyed that book. At the back, there's some talking about me. And then a message for me, and I'll read you the message. A message from Jane. Each one of us makes a difference. We cannot live through a single day without making an impact on the world around us. And we have a choice. What sort of difference will we make? Yeah. I, each one of us matters in the scheme of things. And I encourage everyone, especially young people, to make the world a better place for people animals and the environment and join our program for young people roots and shoots which is in 65 countries now young people from kindergarten through university children are motivated when they can see the positive results their hard work can have as i travel i meet hundreds of roots and shoots groups they're always eager to tell dr jane what they've been doing and how they're making a difference in their communities. Whether they've done something simple, like recycling or collecting trash, or something that requires a great deal of effort, like restoring a wetland, or raising money for street children, or a local dog shelter. They are a continual source of inspiration for me and for other children around the world. I invite you to get involved. You won't regret it. Thank you for listening to this very special book. The story of a little girl called Jane who dreamed of helping animals and grew up to help change the world. Help me to change the world. You can. You can. Thank you.
Well, that was a wonderful story by Jane Goodall talking, or about Jane Goodall, read by Jane Goodall, talking about her life and talking about how she became such an important person in uh, primatology and in science and in our understanding of animals and ourselves. So um, I'm going to now uh, read you a very quick um, story and then we'll do the creative session. And um, after the creative session, basically what I'm going to ask you to do is to send in an email. I'm going to drop it into the group chat now so that you can see where you can send it if you'd like to. But uh, basically I'm going to ask you to please, uh, if, you, if your kids or if you have come up, uh, will come up with a story or an idea that you think that you would want to share with us, um, I would ask you to please send it to, uh, to our, um, uh, to Jane Goodall, to our institute, to Jane Goodall Institute. And um, this is the email address. It is sm at janegoodall.org.sg. And I'll repeat it again later when we do the creative writing session. But I just want you to know if you have any questions or if you'd like to register to find out about future events um, with uh, the Jane Goodall Institute with the Storytelling Project or any of our other many projects like the Monkey Guards or Citizen Scientists, you are totally welcome to write to us and we will get back to you to let you know um, about different ways that you can get involved. Um, you can also bring the storytelling project into your school, either as a digital program or when it's allowed as a live program. Um, and uh, yeah, so here, let me just bring up this uh, story, which is actually quite interesting. It is a retelling of a story by Leo Tolstoy. And uh, um, it's interesting because uh, it's been rewritten to be more for children in this version. So I'm going to just share my screen again and I will take you through the story page by page. Okay, here we go. So everybody can hear me? Great. Mm, here we go, the three questions based on a story by Leo Tolstoy. Okay, so. There once was a boy named Nikolai who sometimes felt uncertain about the right way to act. I want to be a good person, he told his friends, but I don't always know the best way to do that. Nikolai's friends understood and they wanted to help him. If only I could find the answers to my three questions, Nikolai continued, then I would always know what to do. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? And what is the right thing to do? Nikolai's friends considered his first question. Then Sonia the heron spoke. To know the best time to do things, one must plan in advance, she said. Gogol the monkey, who had been rooting through some leaves to find something good to eat, said, you will know when to do things if you watch and play close attention. Then Pushkin the dog, who was just dozing off, rolled over and said, you can't pay attention to everything yourself. You need a pack to keep watch and help you decide when to do things. For example, Gogol, a coconut is about to fall on your head. Nikolai thought for a moment. Then he asked his second question. Who is the most important one? Those who are closest to heaven, said Sonia, circling up into the sky. Those who know how to heal the sick, said Gogol, stroking his bruised noggin. Those who make the rules, growled Pushkin. Nikolai thought some more. Then he asked the third question. What is the right thing to do? Flying, said Sonia. Having fun all the time, laughed Gogol. Fighting, barked Pushkin right away. Then the boy thought for a long time. He loved his friends. He knew they were all trying their best to help him answer his questions, but their answers didn't seem quite right. Then an idea came to him. I know, he thought, I will ask Leo the turtle. He has lived a very long time. Surely he will know the answers I'm looking for. Nikolai hiked high up into the mountains where the old turtle lived all alone. When Nikolai arrived, he found Leo digging a garden. 
The turtle was old and digging was hard for him. I have three questions and I came here to ask your help, Nikolai said. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is the right thing to do? Leo listened carefully, but he only smiled. Then he went on with his digging. Mm, you must be tired, Nikolai said at last. Let me help you. The turtle gave him his shovel and thanked him. And because it was easier for a young boy to dig than it was for an old turtle, Nikolai kept digging on until the rows were finished. But just as he finished, the wind blew wildly and rain burst from darkened clouds. As they moved towards the cottage for shelter, Nikolai suddenly heard a cry for help. Running down the path, he found a panda whose leg had been injured by a fallen tree. Carefully, Nikolai carried her into Leo's house and made a splint for her leg with a stick of bamboo. The storm raged on, banging at the doors and windows. The panda woke up. Where am I, she said, and where is my child? The boy ran out of the cottage and down the path. The roar of the storm was deafening. Pushing against the howling wind and drenching rain, he ran farther into the forest. There he found the panda's child, cold and shivering on the ground. The little panda was wet and scared, but alive. Nikolai carried her inside and made her warm and dry. Then he laid her in her mother's arms. Leo smiled when he saw what the boy had done. The next morning, the sun was warm, birds sang, and all was well with the world. The panda's leg was healing nicely, and she thanked Nikolai for saving her and her baby from the storm. At that moment, Sonia, Gogol, and Pushkin arrived to make sure everyone was all right. Nikolai felt great peace within himself. He had wonderful friends, and he had saved the panda and her child. Mm, but he also felt disappointed. He still had not found the answer to the questions that he had wanted to ask to his three questions. So he asked Leo one more time. The old turtle looked at the boy. But your questions have been answered, he said. They have? asked the boy. Yesterday, if you had not stayed to help me dig my garden, you wouldn't have heard the panda's cries for help in the storm. Therefore, the most important time was the time you spent digging the garden. The most important one at that moment was me, and the most important thing to do was to help me with my garden. Later, when you found the injured panda, the most important time was the time you spent mending her leg and saving her child. The most important ones were the panda and her baby, and the most important thing to do was to take care of them and make them safe. Remember then that there is only one important time and that time is now. The most important one is always the one you are with. And the most important thing to do is to do good for the one who is standing at your side. For these, my dear boy, are the answers to what is most important in this world. This is why we are here. The end. So now I'm going to since we're getting a bit short on time, I'm going to take you through the slides that we use for the creative session. And you can either um, have your kids work along with us right now, or you can show the video to them at another time to take them through the creative writing part. And we will um, be very, very happy to receive uh, any of the uh, things that they make. They can draw a picture, they can write a story, they can make a video, um, they can make a collage on their computer if they want to, if they're good at computers. Um, the options are limitless. We're happy to accept any stories that they come up with. If you just want to uh, make a video or a sound recording of them telling a story, you can also send that to us at sm at janegoodall.org.sg. All right, so I'm going to now take you through the slides for the um, storytelling. One moment, everybody. Um, if you'll just bear with me, I can. Here we go. 
those going. And here we go. Sorry, my computer is taking a little second to load it up. We're almost there. All right. So now you can draw or write a story about wild animals or sea creatures who live in Singapore. And your story could even be the next one that we tell at one of our events. We might also share your drawing or story on the official Jane Goodall Institute. Oops, this is, uh, that's the wrong email address. You should send it to sm at Jane Goodall, not this one. All right, so um, I will share that email at the end for all of you again, the correct email to send it to. All right, so questions to think about for your story about wildlife. And we'll go through these one by one in a minute. What kind of animal is your story about? Where does the animal that you chose live? Why is your animal in trouble? How can your animal be helped? And who will help your animal? No need to answer right now because we're about to go through all of these questions one by one. So think about it for a minute. What kind of animal is your story about? Is it about a raffles banded langer like Poe living here in the forests of Singapore? Or another kind of monkey that lives in Singapore, a macaque who you might have seen hanging out with their troop? Could it be about another Singaporean animal, the otters that live down by Marina Bay Sands near Gardens by the Bay? You might have seen them there sometimes or Hershey, the hermit crab, or any other kind of marine life, like a dolphin, or a fish, or a whale, or about an animal who doesn't even live in Singapore except in the zoo, like a panda. You can write about any animal that you would like. So what kind of animal is your story about? Okay, so once you choose your animal, now you have to think, where does the animal that you chose live? Does it live in a forest, deep in a jungle, like at McRitchie Reservoir? Does it live in a nature reservation, like Bukit Tima, or a park? Does it live at a beach, like Changi Beach? in the story about Hershey the Hermit Crab, or in a park, maybe even across the street from you, or downstairs in your HTB complex. Who knows? It's up to you. You're the one who decides where does the animal that you chose live? Think about it. All right, I'll give you a minute to think about it. So you have an animal. Now you've got to decide where does that animal live? Okay, so why is your animal in trouble? Is it because of pollution? Like the animals, uh, the marine life, the marine animals at Changi Beach, like the turtle who was eating a plastic bag? Is it because of deforestation? All of the trees being cut down in their forest and them losing their home? Could it be because of animal trafficking? where people kidnap wild animals who should be really living out in nature and should never be approached by humans and should be allowed to just live on their own and should not be kept as pets or sold to anybody. What is the problem that your animal is facing? Is his home polluted? Is he losing it because of palm tree plantations? Is he being kidnapped to be sold for uh, illegally for bad reasons? How can your animal be helped? For every problem, there's a way to fix it. So if you think about it, could there be a way that you could help to save your animal? Could your animal go to a vet if it's feeling sick? Could you take part in a beach cleanup to clean the beach? 
or could you get involved in tree planting? Here we have a picture of Jane Goodall helping some kids in Singapore plant trees on one of her visits years ago. Would it be another animal in the troop that might help them? Could it be their own troop that might help them uh, get something to eat or learn how to survive in their environment? Do they need help from another animal? Could it be something else that you could do, like starting a campaign to educate people about the dangers of um, pollution and encouraging them to recycle and showing them why, like this little kid who made a poster to teach people why it was dangerous to pollute and throw things in the water. So how can your animal be helped? What's the solution to the problem? And finally, who will help your animal? This is the last question. Who will help your animal? Will it be a wildlife conservationist like Jane Goodall, who went to Gombe and helped them rebuild their environment and really helped them um, you know, have forests and uh, set up regulations to protect the chimpanzees and the different monkeys there? Um, or other conservationists who are working in Singapore to educate us about Raffles banded langurs and to protect their environments? Could it be another kind of another kind of primate for, or another animal that's similar but different? Uh, same, same, but different. Here we have a picture of a Raffles banded langur hanging out with a macaque. They're two different kinds of monkeys, but maybe they can help each other to protect their forest. Could it be a completely different kind of animal, like this big tortoise who's best friends with this hippopotamus? Maybe it's their family, like this little elephant with his parents. Or maybe it's you, a little kid living here in Singapore. So who is going to help your animal? All right, so I'm gonna go back through the questions one more time. And while I'm doing that, maybe you can keep drawing your drawing or writing your story. So let's think, what kind of animal is your story about? Where does the animal that you chose live? Why is your animal in trouble? How can your animal be helped? And who will help your animal? All right, take your time. There's no rush. You can send it in to us whenever you like. Um, I'm going to just fix this slide so that you have the right um, email address, actually, which is this. So you would need to send it to us at sm at janegoodall.org.sg. And whenever you like, you can send it to us and we will take a look and um, you know, you can send it today, you can send it tomorrow, you can send it next week. And um, we would be happy to put it up on our page for the storytelling project or um, you know, anywhere. Uh, if you just wanna show it to us, but you don't wanna put, put it up, that's also fine. So I'm gonna start wrapping up. I think what I'm gonna do now that you've all seen this, I'll just drop it in the chat again to remind all of you that that's where to send it. And then I'm going to tell people to uh, turn their cameras back on so we can all wave a little goodbye to each other. And, um, you know, thank everybody for taking part today. So I'm going to turn our screens back on. And we're going to say goodbye. And, um, you know, if you have any questions that have come up, you're also welcome to take this opportunity to ask them. So <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. If you have any questions that you want to ask us, now is a good time to do it. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And remember to send Thank you. Stories. Thanks so much for listening. Hope Thanks you had fun. So much. And you can send Thank us you. your stories. Hope you had fun. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you for joining us. Good job, Thank everybody. <laughs> bye. bye.
บายบาย